Hey everyone, um, so thanks for joining. My name is Greg Stachnik, I'm Product Manager here at GridGain. And today we've got um, a session that's gonna talk about um, some new, a new tool that we released this month uh, called GridGain Control Center. And it's providing management, monitoring, and development support um, for Apache Ignite and GridGain applications. So the agenda will follow is um, you know, for those of you that are new to Ignite and GridGain, give a little brief introduction to uh, the platform um, and some of the key capabilities and why people use it. Um, and then we'll get into kind of like the tool um, and see what are the basics, who who, are, who is it used um, by, some of the core features. Um, we'll provide some getting started information if you're interested to get started today. Uh, and then we'll do a demo. And I think probably most of this um, presentation will actually be demo um, because we want to show how easy it is to connect um, Ignite and GridGain applications and start to manage them and debug issues and can just kind of work with, with, with our clusters. And then at the end, we'll do Q&A. So if you're new to Ignite or GridGain, if you're new to distributed computing, um, our uh, technology is uh, built around the Apache Ignite project. It's an open source project in, uh, in, in, in Apache Foundation. It's one of the most active um, communities uh, that we have in Apache. Um, and Apache Ignite is a memory-centric data platform that's used to build fast, scalable, and resilient solutions. Um, it's used to provide speed and scale to new and existing um, data-centric applications. Um, and built on top of Ignite, or built around Ignite, is GridGain which is um, a platform that adds additional enterprise class features on top of the core Ignite. Some of the things that you might use or that are interesting about the Ignite platform is that it um, provides a distributed memory-centric storage. So it allows us to um, take ton, giant data sets and store them in memory. And that could be coming from relational databases, it could be coming from streaming, it could be coming from NoSQL, it could be coming from Hadoop, all different kinds of data sources. But the, core, the, the, the point of distributed centric storage is that we're putting all of that into memory. And it gives us much more speed and uh, the ability to, to scale. We also support co-located compute, which allows us to bring the computations that we're running in our application to the servers where the data actually resides so that we can eliminate um, network bottlenecks. Um, in terms of interfaces or how we work with the data that's in memory, um, we have a couple of different um, types of ways to interact. Uh, we have key value support, um, which, uh, and then we also have SQL. Uh, SQL is probably the more common way that um, our users and inter uh, Ignite users kind of work with this because um, they're coming, a lot of customers are coming from a relational database background. They're taking that relational database, they're taking these large data sets, they're putting it into memory, and they're just using that natural SQL language to interact and do queries and, um, and to interact with that data. Um, and then we also support um, ACID transactions and, and a number of other features. Um, now, this um, distributed uh, memory store, this, these clusters, um, can be used in any type of application, including web applications, mobile applications, you know, integrations with social media or IoT. Um, and then on top of Ignite, that core, is we add um, additional enterprise class capabilities that are part of GridGain. Um, and so we have a couple, a few editions of GridGain. We have our free GridGain Community Edition, we have GridGain Enterprise Edition, which adds um, security. It adds the ability to do rolling upgrades, which um, when you're doing upgrades of an application or of your, of your cluster, you can do it with zero downtime. Um, it also gives us the ability to replicate our cluster data across different data centers so that we can um, you know, have high availability or automatic failover, things like that. And then we have additional features around persistence in GridGain, ability to um, not only to use this distributed um, uh, Ignite clusters or gradient clusters um, as a cache, but also use persistence so that these caches can be an in-memory database. We also use persistence um, to do things like backup and restore so that we can take snapshots of the cluster in case we have any kind of problems with the, with the um, cluster application that crashes or a node goes down, then we can restore um, for both full and incremental backups. 
So that's the platform. Let's talk about the tools that we have built um, that just came out that uh, make it easier to work with this platform. Um, so Grid Game Control Center is our new tool. Um, it's built uh, for both uh, management, monitoring, and developers um, that are working with Apache Ignite and Grid Game. Um, supports multiple versions of each of the underlying technologies. So if I am working with Ignite, um, you can connect Ignite to eight clusters. If I'm working with Grid Gain, we support Grid Gain 8.7, um, 18 and higher. Um, and from within an, a, a single installation of Control Center, we can manage multiple clusters simultaneously, multiple versions of those clusters simultaneously, and multiple editions. So if I have one application that's using Ignite 2.8, I have another application that is using, say, Grid Gain Community Edition 8718 and another one that's Enterprise Edition 8719. One tool can help us work with all of those. So we've been building tools um, to make it easy to work with Ignite and Grid Gain um, for a number of years. Um, we started with a tool called Visor, which is a kind of a desktop application um, that was uh, great for um, local development. Gave you, um, you know, the information that you needed. Um, from your local igniter grid gain and give you querying tools, things like that. Um, we then um, kind of came out with another tool uh, that was for more of a hosted service to manage multiple um, clusters simultaneously, which is called Web Console. Um, and now we have a, a new iteration based on all of that, those years of customer feedback um, and kind of changing uh, priorities of the marketplace and just different expectations of developers, um, we have a new, uh, a new interface that's much more flexible um, than uh, kind of the previous, some, some of our previous tools. So let's talk about, you know, why you would use uh, uh, control, our, our control center tool. And in, in many respects, it kind of depends on your background. So if you are uh, an IT, operator or an admin or something like that, um, you're using tools to make sure that, that cluster and your nodes are running and performing properly. You were wanting to look at metrics. You probably want to um, define alerts to be notified of um, any instance where instability might be creeping into your cluster. Uh, you might be doing some management um, capabilities like setting up back a backup schedule. Or um, maybe you're, um, you know, adding um, additional nodes to your cluster and you want to monitor how the data is getting rebalanced uh, across the nodes. If you're a developer, you might have different priorities. For example, you might have, uh, you, want, you want to connect to your cluster and you want to build your queries. You want to debug those queries. You want to make sure that those queries are being tuned properly, that you have indexed um, your your tables and your caches properly. Um, you may be asked to go and debug an issue because maybe there was a problem with a slow running API call or a transaction got hung or something crashed. And so you may need to um, be able to, you, you may want to go in and get to the root cause of problems that have occurred in that cluster. So depending on your role, we have different, um, we have one tool that gives you, um, you know, a lot of different tools, but you might find some pieces more interesting than others, depending on your background. We're gonna go through everything today. Um, so one of the key pieces um, of, our, of, our, um, of the tool is the ability to monitor metrics. Um, and this has and, and this has gotten much more interesting over the last few months because Ignite and GridGain have, um, over the last six months, have done a, a major overhaul of their uh, metrics framework. Um, in the past, it was um, based on our own um, proprietary proto or our own um, proprietary protocol of how we report metrics. Um, but at the end of last year, we've um, moved over both in Ignite and in GridGain to OpenCensus. Um, if you're not familiar with OpenCensus or OpenTelemetry, um, it's a standard um, that many um, frameworks and applications use um, to provide a, a standard way of reporting both metrics and um, traces. So now we have um, also embraced that open census and open uh, telemetry standard so that our metrics um, are, are more consumable by more tools that support open census. Greek Game Control Center is one of those tools that supports open census. And so now um, you can 
basically instead of having to hunt through and understand kind of which metrics are backed by which mbean and which mbean is the you know the, the important one and reading through documentation um, to figure out you know what are the different categories that you need um, the tool makes it much more easy um, you've got hundreds of metrics to choose from um, and then you can use these um, to drag and drop and make your own custom dashboards our dashboards are built around a widget system so we have different visualizations and you just pick the metrics that are important um, and you have your own and you build your own kind of custom views into your cluster and the reason why we think this is important is that you can use Ignite and GridGain for many different purposes. You might be doing um, more memory-centric um, uh, computing, in which case maybe heap and off heap um, and garbage collection are really important. So you might build some custom dashboards around kind of memory usage. Whereas maybe um, another application that you're developing is more compute-centric, in which case maybe CPU or thread times or things like that are more important and you can build custom dashboards for those. We also have presets so that we can, you know, you can get started very quickly, um, but it's a very flexible way of, of um, representing the important data for your application. Similarly, um, just how we can build dashboards to see the state of our application as it exists right now, built around these hundreds of new open census-based metrics, we also wanted to make it easier to um, build alerts so that even if you're away from your dashboards and away from the tool, you can still have monitoring and be notified of, of potential problems. Um, so this is a new feature that we um, have expanded greatly in Control Center, which is a, a flexible alerting system. So I can pick a metric, define my thresholds, uh, and then define my notification channels. And then the tool will immediately start monitoring my cluster, my nodes, and my caches for whatever the important metric is. Um, at the moment, we have support for um, UI-based notifications, email, and SMS, and we are adding additional notification channels um, as we move into our, our future releases. So when you're working with um, distributed uh, computing, uh, one of the um, popular features of both Ignite and GridGain is the ability to add resilience to your data set. What this means is that if you have multiple nodes in your cluster, you may want to take that data that is in those nodes and copy it or, and you know, distribute it into partitions so that it exists across multiple nodes. Um, so that if a node goes down or you're adding another node, you don't lose data. The data is still copied a, a, across you know, one or two or three additional nodes. Um, the trick is though that um, when we uh, add or remove nodes, um, we do a rebalance um, step, in which case data is being passed around um, and, and recopied so that um, you know, we, we, don't, um, we minimize the risk of data loss. Um, that rebalance process um, can be a little bit tricky to understand. Um, and so we have new visualizations to help understand exactly when rebalance is taking place, which nodes are involved in a rebalance, and their status, like what percentage of the rebalance has occurred. Um, so it makes it much easier to kind of understand what's going on, give you a better visualization into the internals of Ignite and grid gain. Um, and then similarly, uh, a similar visualization, but a different purpose, is um, a feature for our grid gain enterprise edition, which is rolling upgrades. So if I have a cluster of multiple nodes and I want to upgrade my version, say from uh, 8.7.18 to 8.7.19, um, I have a couple of options. If I'm you know, if I'm using Enterprise Edition or higher, um, I can individually upgrade in, um, those nodes without taking my cluster down so that, I, um, so that I can basically upgrade each node step by step, um, do a rebalance, um, and have eventually the whole cluster upgraded without having to do a full reboot. So the zero downtime upgrade. Um, and so this similar type of visualization will show you the progress of your rolling upgrades so you can understand which nodes um, still need to be upgraded, um, the, pro you know, the, the version that they are on, things like that. Another major feature that we've introduced that's new, um, both on the runtime side, so grid gain side, as well as in our tools, is the ability to collect um, traces and to use this information to try and get to the root cause of potential problems. So I had discussed before that um, over the past six months, we've been um, you know, moving to open census 
for a metric collection. Um, we also have been instrumenting the code um, in order to start collecting tracing information. Um, and so that's through the process of uh, basically um, taking API calls and writing uh, span data. So a span um, is uh, an individual execution. Um, a collection of spans get um, you know combined in, to order, in order to represent a trace. Um, span data um, from our, our execution includes things like a stack trace, uh, the nodes that were involved, the time it took to execute that step in the call stack, um, and then depending on the API of grid gain, um, we have some additional useful information. So if I am collecting traces from, say, discovery, which is the events when nodes join and exit the cluster, or when we're doing um, exchange of data, um, or you know, um, doing affinity co-location, um, there's one set of artifacts that are, or one set of data points that are interesting. Uh, but if I'm doing tracing and I want to kind of debug the timing or something going on with transactions, it's a different set of information that might be interesting from the spans. So Control Center will read that span data, um, highlight the most important pieces of that information, stitch it all together um, so that you have a single place where you can basically debug, um, debug your code in tracing. Um, this is much easier than the way that it worked um, you know, before we started instrumenting our um, frameworks with traces, because you know, in a distributed system, you have APIs that are executing across multiple nodes. API calls might be bouncing from one node to another and back to the original. So in order to debug, you typically you know, pull logs from each individual node, line up timestamps, maybe pull some thread dumps. Um, so it's a very um, labor-intensive process. By having the tool collect that information and then um, combining it into a single location makes it much faster to get uh, to the, the proper um, you know, details that you're looking for. Now to set up tracing, um, there's a few steps. So we ship the tracing um, libraries out of the box. Um, we make them as optional libraries so you can add those to your class path. Um, and then you can also, uh, you also would need to add um, the, the uh, Open Census Tracing SPI bean uh, to your cluster configuration. Um, and then once that's enabled, then uh, you can start collecting traces. Now, and, uh, one thing to note is that tracing is currently only available in the grid gain editions. So community edition, enterprise, and ultimate edition have tracing enabled. Um, tracing is in the process of being contributed to Apache Ignite. Um, and if I understand it correctly, the current time frame for tracing to be added to Ignite is in the 2.9 uh, release, which I think is like the summer. So it's not very far away. So if you wanted to get involved in, if you want to start playing around with tracing now, um, you could try out Grid Gang Community Edition. That's free. Um, and then if you're still, you know, want to, if, if you'd rather wait um, and uh, wait for it to come to Ignite, um, Grid Gang Control Center will have the tools ready for you when you when you join, because it supports it today. So another feature that we have, um, which is more on the grid gain side, um, is uh, the ability to take backups of our cluster. Uh, so that's through a feature called Snapshots. Um, so within Control Center, we make it very easy to understand how snapshots work. We give you a visual way of configuring snapshots. You can take both full and incremental snapshots. You can analyze your snapshots to make sure that they are not corrupted. Um, we can um, basically take, uh, we can move them, delete them, and then of course apply them. Uh, and so why would you, why would you want to do snapshotting? Um, so it's because you're trying to protect, protect against uh, data loss, really. So if it could be that uh, you're taking, you know, a full snapshot, um, on a regular schedule, maybe uh, every day, and then you're taking uh, incremental snapshots uh, on a more frequent schedule um, because they take up uh, less storage. And then if you had some kind of problem, maybe it was a crash or maybe it was data corruption. Um, it could be even that uh, for business reasons, maybe uh, some uh, data was added to your data set that you shouldn't have. If you want to do a rollback, then you can just go back and um, apply like those full snapshots or the collection of incremental snapshots that get you to you know, the, the point that you want to restore to. Um, 
So the tooling um, basically will detect um, the cluster that's connected. Uh, we'll check, is it uh, Grigain Ultimate Edition? If so, then it enables the snapshots feature. If it's Ignite or if it's Community Edition or another um, runtime that doesn't support snapshots, then we just dis disable the feature. So based on the cluster connection, we enable and disable um, the appropriate features for that, for that cluster type. So it makes it very flexible to have kind of one tool that supports uh, multiple editions of Ignite and GridGain, but then, you know, based on the connection, we in it, we give you the features that um, are most appropriate. So a feature that we've had in all of our tools um, throughout history is the ability to query. Um, and that's really one of the most common um, developer-oriented kind of features um, that you would use if you're coming to um, Ignite or grid gain. Um, you likely have a SQL background. Um, SQL makes it very easy to work with these data sets. You just use normal SQL language. Um, and then we have a, a full kind of editing experience. Um, it's been, you know, the, the UI has been reimagined a few times um, between our different tool iterations. Um, at the moment, we're working with a UI that looks more like uh, your typical kind of database IDE. Um, so we have um, our connection information. We can, you know, kind of browse the tables and columns, the, you know, kind of traverse the schema. And we have our um, editor that we can run um, queries. Uh, and then we can um, do some analysis. So if a query is taking a long time, um, we can go and um, analyze that long running query. Uh, we can also look at the execution history. Um, and get some statistics about, you know, the, the fail rate, the success rate, the average time that they executed. Uh, and then we can get into the details of that query execution. This is all to help us um, fine tune our queries because that's one of the, the key things is that I have all of this data in memory, um, but am I structuring it properly? Am I indexing it properly? So that when I'm running these queries, I can get the maximum um, execution speed. And so these tools um, are in place to help you as a developer um, basically build those queries properly, run them, test them, um, all with all from within the, the same place where you might be doing debugging and the same place where you might be doing monitoring. So this is all things we'll be de demoing uh, in, in a few minutes. So how do I get access to Control Center? Well, there's um, at the moment we have one option. Um, we are hosting Control Center for free for anyone to connect to um, on control.gridgain.com. Um, so it has the full functionality available um, and it just depends on the edition that you connect with. So if you're running um, Ignite 2.8 or if you're running Gridgain 8.7, you can connect. You can have multiple connections. We'll manage them concurrently. Um, we do have a limit to the amount of um, uh, historical metrics data that we're storing at the moment. Um, and then uh, in the coming weeks, we'll be releasing uh, downloadable versions of uh, Control Center. Um, so if you don't want to use the hosted version, you just want to run it you know, locally on your laptop, um, we'll provide both uh, zip and Docker-based uh, downloads uh, for this uh, kind of lightweight developer version. And if you want to run it as like an internal service that you're, you know, you're going to be managing like big production environments with lots of nodes and lots of clusters, um, then we'll have a commercial version available as well that can be installed um, both via kind of a bare metal zip file or um, you know, installed as a, uh, from Docker into, uh, into a container or into Kubernetes, things like that. So to get started today, you can just use um, control.gridgain.com and that's available right now. Um, so how do we get started? Uh, so one of the things is we need to, um, uh, our, our control center is based around um, the presence of an agent on your class, uh, within your cluster. Um, and so depending on um, whether you're starting from a grid game based cluster or an Apache Ignite based cluster, you have a little bit um, of a different configuration for the agent. So grid gain, we ship the agent by default. Um, it's in our optional libs folder. You just need to copy that agent into the libs and then just start your cluster and you'll have a cluster ID and you plug that cluster ID into the tool and you're ready to go. Um, on the Ignite side, um, we don't um, distribute the agent with Ignite by default, so you need to download it. Um, you can get it from gridgain.com downloads or you can get it from Maven. Um, we have the, uh, the agent available in our uh, Ignite our, sorry, our grid gain Maven repository. So you can just add that um, 
add that dependency to your POM file. That's all in our documentation how you configure that. Um, and then just start the cluster and get the cluster ID. So everything is kind of based around this cluster ID. You provide the cluster ID to Control Center, it does this handshake, um, and then we start managing. So let's take a look at a demo. I'm going to demo um, with GridGain. I have actually a, a couple of clusters running, but I'm going to do most of the demo on a, a local GridGain Community Edition. And I've pre-populated it with um, like the World SQL uh, schema. So I have some data to kind of query against. Um, I'm going to run, actually, uh, I also have GridGain Ultimate Edition running locally. I think I've taken it down um, just to kind of save local resources. And I'm actually going to run um, our downloadable version of uh, Control Center. Um, but I could have easily run this on the hosted version as well. So let's switch over to my browser. Okay, so I can see the welcome screen. So I'm here in Control Center. We can get some basic information about the capabilities, but the important thing I want to do is sign in. Now, if I'm, this is the first time I'm using Control Center, particularly if I'm using um, control.gridgain.com, I want to use the sign up link. Uh, just provide some information, username, password, uh, and you can immediately get started. Um, I've already created an account, um, so I'm just going to sign in here. Okay, so what do I see? I'm in my clusters view, and I can see that I have um, two clusters. One is uh, currently running, it has uh, uh, five uh, server nodes, one client node, uh, and the other cluster is currently disconnected. So we can have multiple cluster connections. We'll show you the current um, you know, cluster uptime, whether they're connected or disconnected. Uh, and we can also, if we're doing maintenance um, on the clusters, we can uh, deactivate them uh, if we wanted to like stop um, data from executing against them. Um, typically when you're connecting for the first time, um, you will connect in a deactivated state. So you'll want to click the button to activate. And then that will start to collect metrics data from your uh, from your cluster so we're connected um, so let's start to look at some um, information around let's see do i have this running yes oh sorry i need to go to my active cluster um, so let's take a look at uh, metrics so as i was saying before we've um you know GridGain and ignite have um, recently um, updated their metrics framework to um, be built around open census. Um, and so this gives us the ability to very easily um, add and monitor um, hundreds uh, of different metrics into custom dashboards within Control Center. So what I see right now in the default view is my list of nodes. So I can see I have um, all of my nodes are of the same version. I can see my IP address, my JVM. I can see that I have um, different types. So I have my coordinator node, uh, my server nodes, and I have one client node in here as well. Um, so some of the other um, kind of widgets that we have available, um, I have um, graphs. Uh, so this graph is showing my CPU load. So we can see at the moment, um, since I was giving the presentation, I wasn't putting much load on my um, cluster. So that looks pretty low right now. And I can see it sorted by the nodes. Uh, I can see my heap usage. Um, so I can see that uh, one of my nodes, which is my client node, um, has been kind of adding and you know being it has um it's basically is set to do some activity um as it's uh, as it's putting a, a bit of a variable load on my cluster uh, i can see here i have a table of my memory i can see it i'm currently looking at the heap used uh, but maybe i want to add some additional metrics so let's say uh we want to look at both our off heap um, and our heap so i'll just go into my metric selector um search by you know the type um, or by the name or by the units. I can also select by the scope. We have um, our metrics are divided into cluster, node, and cache scope. Um, so maybe I'll just have uh, non heap and heap. Okay, so now I have an updated table that can show kind of like my, my heap usage as well as my off heap. And then I have a heat map. This is a kind of a newer widget um, that we didn't have in past tools. And what this is giving us is the ability to um, basically define thresholds and then show um, an individual metric across our nodes. So I have you know my four my five server nodes, my one client node, and this is currently um, showing heap usage. 
So I can see that you know these uh, server nodes are you know doing okay, um, but my client node is is actually using a lot of heap right now, um, a lot more than I had uh, defined for my uh, for my thresholds. Uh, and but just like um, where, how I was able to add and remove uh, metrics within uh, the table, I can also very easily switch to different metrics for my heat maps or my graphs or anything else, um, so that I can you know basically analyze the metrics that are most important. Um, what if I wanted to create some new, um, ad monitor additional things? Like for example, maybe I want to monitor um, the partitions um, as, I'm, uh, as data is being rebalanced across my, uh, across my cluster. Um, so maybe I'll create a new uh, metric that is uh, kind of node-based and we'll um, have it look at my partition duration, so how long it's taking for these partitions to, to occur. Uh, you'll add another widget. Um, this one will be the rebalance. Um, so this is giving us um, the ability to see um, you know, the rebalance. I, I'm not doing any rebalance right now. Um, I can visualize um, the rebalance uh, progress as it's, uh, if there was an event like a node joined, a node left, or I changed my baseline topology, that would trigger a rebalance. And then I can go and see kind of the progress of how that data is being um, redistributed and see which node um, is currently undergoing kind of that rebalance event. Um, similarly, if I'm using, um, uh, if I want to monitor the, oops, let's see, let's do this. Reposition this guy here, over here. Similarly, if I want to track um, our version distribution, um, I can view it in the progress. I can um, show uh, our rebalance in the context of versioning. Um, if I'm using enterprise edition or higher, then I can also use this to monitor my um, uh, my, my rolling upgrades um, progress. So maybe let's also add a table. We'll maybe make this around um, a node level event rebalance. And maybe this will give us a, 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 some information around kind of the progress of our rebalancing. So here now we have a, a, a view that's kind of set, um, kind of geared toward uh, our data data exchange. Similarly, maybe I have um, maybe I'm doing um, a lot of um, CPU intensive uh, monitoring, in which case maybe I want to build a custom dashboard around kind of CPU usage. Um, so you know I'll create a, a kind of a basic um, layout. And then I can start to swap out um, some of these metrics. So maybe heap isn't interesting because I'm tracking it on the first tab, um, but maybe I want to look at some of my, um, you know, uh, threads. And instead of heap here, maybe I want to look at CPU or uh, our CPU and our GC CPU. So very quickly, I can swap. Um, my displays to use the metrics that are important to me. Um, I can distribute it among multiple tabs. These tabs can actually be um, added in different browser tabs. So if I wanted to have you know, multiple browsers that are showing um, concurrent dashboards, I can also do that. So in addition to visualizing data, we can also define alerts. Um, so because we have access to hundreds of um, different metrics, um, it gives us a, a way to have a very flexible alerting system so that we can create alerts for um, you know, the important metrics that are specific to our application. Um, so I've created a couple of um, metrics currently around memory usage and CPU load. Um, I'll add another one here. Let's call it um, maybe node count. So we'll look at the cluster um, scoped metrics. And let's just say that uh, maybe we'll make it around our server nodes. And let's say that if our server nodes are less than 10, uh, or more than you know a few milliseconds, then uh, we need to notify someone. Um, so maybe I'll notify uh, my, my team.
And so as these, um, these uh, alerts are uh, monitoring our cluster, if we have an alert that gets triggered, um, you know, we'll get a, a status here that an alert is in progress. We'll start to see um, events get logged and get information about um, the individual alert, get into the details of it to see how it was configured, see who's being notified, and then we can always add and remove additional notification channels as needed. Um, right now, I just have two different emails that are firing off to um, different aliases. So the idea about alerts is that we're trying to make it easy to um, provide some monitoring without requiring us to kind of sit in front of a, the monitoring tool, right? So. You know, there are probably some thresholds that you want to make sure that once they're passed, that you are alerted, and that would be long before there's a problem with your cluster individually. So let's take a look at SQL. So as a developer, um, you're probably using, um, if you, uh, with Ignite or Grid Gain, you're probably using SQL. Um, to build queries against the data that is in memory. Um, and so we provide a, a full kind of SQL editor um, with some kind of performance and debugging tools. So on the left side here within this UI, oh, actually, you know, I'm gonna switch to my different view. I forgot that I was in the light mode. I kind of prefer the dark mode. Um, so here I'm gonna be in my, uh, my uh, connection to this cluster. I can see here within my schema that I have um, this world SQL uh, sample uh, sample schema. Um, so I can see my tables, I can see my columns. If I mouse over, I can get some details about um, those artifacts. I can also see that it, these um, tables are in um, caches. And then I have an, an addi additional cache that we created called random ints. That's what our client uses to distribute some load across the cluster at random. And then I can also see the nodes that are involved in this uh, cluster with their node IDs. So this gives me a sense of what is um, available in this connection, what the schema is, uh, what the tables are, and then I can start to you know, run some queries. So from within my query editor, um, maybe I'll just uh, add another uh, table, in this case person. So let me execute it. Uh, we can see here that it executed properly, um, then we inserted, which worked, and then we ran uh, a select statement. So we can see that information here. And then we see also that person was added to um, both uh, as a new cache, as well as um, listed in the public tables. Uh, maybe we wanna run some additional queries, uh, maybe something that's um, built around um, some of the existing information in, in this world SQL schema. So here I'm gonna say, let's uh, select the max population um, from these countries, and we'll group them by, um, by, the, by the names. So if I run this query against the entire cluster, um, I get the expected result, which is China, India, and the United States with, um, the, pop with the population size as defined in this sample application. If I wanted to um, run um, some additional, um, provide some advanced options, maybe I want to just run this query on particular nodes. So maybe here I'll say, just run this query on um, this individual node. And now let's try and execute. And now we'll see, gives us a better sense of how the data is distributed across these, across the nodes of this cluster. Right? We just ran and said, okay, on this specific node, run that same thing and give me the, the results. We can see that um, you know, these city, these countries are distributed on that node. Um, maybe I will check a different node. Run it again. And we can see kind of how that how that data is distributed. And we also have some additional advanced features. Um, we can do laser result sets. We can um, put in some properties around joins. Um, if you're unfamiliar with any of those features or kind of what the impact is, um, we provide context sensitive help so that you can learn about these concepts and why you might wanna use them. Uh, maybe I wanna define an, another, um, uh, another query as well. Let's say, just let's just return all of the rows of city. Okay, so we can get all of the rows um, of the city uh, table. Um, and so we've just been working with like kind of building queries, running them, testing them, adding new, adding new tables. Um, but also, you know, what, what if we wanna look at um, some of our uh, running queries? 
Um, if the query is taking a while to run, we might want to know that it hasn't completed yet. For example, um, this select statement from city, because city is a huge table, it's actually taking a little bit of time to uh, complete. Um, and I've added some performance issues that makes it run slowly. Um, but this will give me an idea of um, running queries that are taking a long time to execute, and it gives me some tools to um, kind of introspect into what that query was. Um, and then I can you know, take some action. Maybe I want to um, you know, debug, pull out some logs, or look at more information about that, that query. Maybe decide that the query is taking a long time because I didn't index properly or something like that. Um, similarly, um, the history of my queries is tracked here so that I can see um, you know, when I've, how many times I've run these queries, um, their success and failure rate, their average execution time, and then if I wanted to um, kind of look into the details of that, um, of that uh, query, here I can get to the, the full um, uh, query that was executed. But then if I want to get into um, understand the um, kind of how it, res how it gets run, the implementation of that, um, of that query as it runs across Ignite or GridGain, um, I can use and explain, um, which will show me kind of how this is actually gets um, constructed both when it's uh, in its uh, map and reduce steps. So this helps me kind of understand more of the internal um, execution of SQL um, in uh, Ignite and Grid Gain, allowing me to get more information about um, kind of how this is working. And um, you know, if I need to maybe make some adjustments to the way I've constructed my query, this can help me help provide some hints. Okay, so another developer-oriented feature um, is the ability to um, debug um, API calls through tracing. So I mentioned during our slides that we um, have been instrumenting within GridGain um, some different um, of the portions of, of the GridGain um, kind of stack to be able to start to collect tracing information in the form of spans. So we have instrumented both the discovery which has to do with kind of like nodes joining and leaving clusters and um, exchanging information. We've also instrumented transactions. Um, so if you're running transactions, you have a problem with the transaction, maybe it's hung or it failed, um, you might want to enable tracing and you can start to collect spans around um, transactions to help you debug issues. So what I've, I've just enabled um, tracing on discovery right now. So when my nodes are joining and leaving and they're um, you know, kind of doing rebalance events, I'm collecting those spans and then I can drill down into any of them. So um, this gives us an, uh, the, the APIs that were um, tracked, uh, when they occurred, how long it took, the total number of um, operations in that call stack, and then some details about um, the, the classes or the, the, the individual API that was um, occurring. So I'm going to sort by uh, the total number of spans. So maybe we'll take this join request that um, I initiated uh, you know, before we started this event. Um, it took 100 milliseconds um, and there were quite a few different events that happened during that execution. So I'll select that event and then let's get into the details of the spans. So we can see that the total duration um, is here. It had a depth of four. There's 20 total spans the time that it happened. And so now I can start to walk through my, my call stack. So this was um, a point where I was adding my nodes to the cluster. Um, and I already had some data populated. So um, it's not just that the node joined, but there was some data that had to exchange. And so what are we seeing here? Well, we see that um, at this point, there was a, a request for this node to join my cluster. If I select the item, I can see um, that uh, the thread ID, I can get the stack trace, I can get um, the names and IDs of the nodes that were involved, and then if I need to, I can also get some additional logs coming from the nodes. And so this will allow me to very quickly, and notice here also, we see the, the node IDs um, involved here at the, at the span, kind of the, the, the higher level span. So that gives us a very clear indication of when the API has jumped from one node to another. In this case, what we're seeing is that, you know, we're doing this um, data exchange. We can get some more information about the affinity, about um, 
kind of the topology versions when these um, exchanges are occurring. Um, uh, we can see if the topology major or minor versions have updated as part of this exchange. Um, and so this makes it very easy um, to get into details of our execution and try to identify both problems as well as slow running operations so that we can um, debug those more, uh, more thoroughly. Because you know, one of the, the key value of Ignite and Grid Gain is that we're loading all this data into memory so that we can get speed and we can you know, add that, we can um, distribute it across multiple nodes in our cluster so we get scale. Um, but if we have some problem with our application, um, either the business logic or a poorly defined query or something else, um, and that might, that might cause um, a, a slowdown. So tracing can help us get to the bottom of those um, of those issues, do by uh, making it easier to do root cause analysis. I'm just um, I only I'm only running with um, the grid gain code instrumented. If you have application code that you've also instrumented in Open Census, um, we will also show that of those spans as well. So it's not just a grid gain centric tracing tool. Um, it's a trace. It's a general purpose tracing tool for any code that's been instrumented. Um, so we would show those application um, specific spans in these calls as well. Um, let's see. So we also have um, some. Now I'm, I'm not running. Uh, I'm running Community Edition right now. Um, but we also have some uh, more enterprise level features for uh, grid gain, uh, such as grid gain ultimate edition. Um, so snapshots is a feature that we make available um, for grid gain ultimate edition users that allows us to um, take, uh, capture the state of a cluster, both in full and incremental backups. Um, and the UI makes it really easy to get started. Um, at the moment, because I've connected from community edition, um, that feature is not available, so we just give you some information about how you would enable Snapshot and you need Ultimate Edition for it. Um, in the interest of time, I'm not going to switch over to uh, my Ultimate Edition cluster, um, but I've been collecting snapshots uh, you know, all day um, with different um, topologies and, and different uh, uh, cache, cache sizes. Um, so that, that, that's probably a topic for a, another webinar. Um, so that's the overview of of, uh, of grid gain control center. So what have we what have we done? We have um, connected a local cluster. Um, we've loaded it up with uh, a sample uh, database. So um, that World SQL schema. Um, we have uh, defined some alerts to monitor for different events around memory, around CPU usage, and around our number of nodes. We've done some SQL development. So we've um, performed some queries. We've added another table. We've looked at a long running query. Uh, we've also looked at some of the query statistics to get into the details of um, how those queries executed. Um, and then we also looked at tracing. So we looked at how we can um, collect span information across multiple nodes to try and debug um, issues so that we can um, very easily, uh, very easily get to the bottom of maybe slow running operations or operations that may have crashed or got stuck or something like that. So let's switch back to slides. So let's open this up for questions. Awesome. Uh, thanks, Craig. Um, audience, uh, as I mentioned earlier, if you have any questions uh, for Greg, um, can enter them in the question section in the control panel. Um, okay, so let me uh, maybe read out. Uh, we have a few questions already. Let me uh, let me start from the top. Um, one of the earlier questions we got was: uh, Is it possible to create, update, and alter caches using this tool? Yes. Yeah. So that was one of the things that we did during the demo. Um, so we created a new cache called Person. Uh, we populated it with some data, um, but because this is just running SQL, um, you can use that uh, to to make uh, you know to run those operations and, and make changes uh, very quickly. Awesome. Um, another question um, was about the open census metrics. So the I guess 
The control center looks great, but are the open census metrics available outside that? So that yes, you can yes. Okay. because we are running with um, because we're following the open census standard, other open census compliant tools can also take advantage of that data and, and represent it. Um, you may need to build an exporter um, if the, it, it just depends on whether your third party tool has um, like an appropriate exporter. Um, but yes, yes, you're not limited to control center. Great, and and if that's true, uh, a related question is um, uh, if if these metrics are available outside Control Center, do all nodes publish the cl cluster level metrics, or is it just the at the coordinator node? So the way that um, the the way that the metrics are um, reported is. Um, the coordinator node is um, where our active agent resides. And so the agent will, will basically ping all of the nodes or, or collect all of the metrics from the nodes, um, collate them and send them, uh, and then send them to control center. So um, not every node is um, basically routing traffic directly to control center. It's just the agent that is on the coordinator node. Um, if that coordinator node was to go down for some reason, because the agent is on is on the class path, or it's basically part of every node, um, the next node that gets promoted to coordinator will then also have the active agent, and then that at, that active agent will then um, collect the metrics across all of the nodes and then report it back to report it back to um, the control center. Um, I'm not sure if that answers the question or not. Yeah, Oliver. If you if you want to follow up, um, feel free to ask ask in the chat box. And then um, I guess here's one question: Would it be possible to SSH into the server nodes from the UI? Um, not at the moment. So if you wanted to um, SSH, uh, and, you know, like to use like a, you know to like provide like a console access like a command prompt access. We, we don't currently have like an embedded console or a command prompt or anything like that. Um, so you would still need to do that from outside of control center. Um, that said, uh, we're giving you a lot of, um, we're pulling a lot of the information, allowing you to perform some op a lot of operations on the nodes and the caches um, that you, know, you normally would do by SSHing into the node and using control SH. So, um, in, in some respects, you, you don't need to do that as much because the tool is giving you so much uh, visibility. Um, here's a question on performance. How much CPU does the agent use and the amount uh, of memory? It's it's negligible. Um, we are seeing basically no performance hit um, on the node uh, that the, the agent uh, on the active agent. Great. And then um, this may vary based on the version, but the question is how long is the metrics history stored? So in the, um, for the, our hosted version on control.gridgain.com, we currently are storing metrics history for 24 hours. We're um, in the process of uh, you know, improving that. We'll expand it um, hopefully to a, a few days. Um, once we release the downloadable versions, um, that's up to you how long you want it to be stored for. Um, the way the metrics get stored, um, just give you a little bit of kind of internal implementation information, is we use um, Ignite Persistence uh, internally to store that metrics data. So um, uh, basically you have like a internal cluster that is um, analyzing your application and that is uh, storing, the, storing the metrics data. Um, that's how it works. And then you, you know, you mentioned this. The question is, is there a plan to make this available for download? Uh, you know, it's going to come shortly, right? That's correct. Yeah. So we're we're planning to have these uh, the the same thing that I was demonstrating um, available for download, both as a zip and as a Docker image, um, in, in the coming weeks. It'll be um, hopefully in, in the next month or so. I also see a question: um, What's the difference between um, Ignite and Community Edition? Um, so they're essentially the same. Um, Community Edition has 
a, a more frequent um, release schedule than Apache Ignite. Um, and we also provide support um, for community edition. So it should be a very, um, uh, you know, if you're using Ignite already, it should be a very seamless like transition if you wanted to start um, using community edition um, binaries instead. Um, one thing uh, that differentiates community edition at the moment is that it already has the tracing, um, whereas the tracing is still going through the uh, uh, you know, contr contribution process to Ignite. Yeah, great, yeah. Um... And then maybe uh, there's another couple of questions on metrics. Um, can the UI uh, collect metrics from our own comp components, for example, services running in the on the cluster, such yes. as yeah. Okay. And then um, here's one. It says, are the metric widgets customizable with respect to the um, application? So the widgets, um, so we have different um, visualizations as widgets. So we have graphs, charts, histograms, heat, uh, heat maps. Um, each of those widgets are customizable by the metric that is displayed. Um, if it's a, a metric that has like thresholds or color coding, you can define the thresholds. Um, and then um, if, if you want to show a subset of the nodes, on the graphs, then you can select like which which nodes you want to display. Like if you have a huge cluster and then you think it's going to be too busy or something like that, you maybe only want to show a subset, then you can select those. Um, I see another question here about auto suggest and auto completion for SQL. Um, that that is available. Um, I think I might have demonstrated it. So you just do like you 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 would do a control space just like you would use um, in any like IDE. Or any you know text editor, uh, and then we will give you um, content assist both for SQL, um, for the names of your uh, tables and columns, and as well as cache names. Perfect. And maybe one last question: um, Is there any matrix we can see the list of threads currently running on the cluster? Yeah. So that's a tape. You can um, create your own um, table widget. Um, and then you can select the, the threads metrics and, and build your own kind of like custom view of, of threads that are running. Yeah. So that's, that's all in there. Uh, and one enhancement we're working on um, for a future release is um, to provide embedded documentation for those metrics because there are so many of them. Um, you know, we, we think it would be, uh, you know, more useful to, to have not only the metrics names and the search capabilities, but also pull in the documentation directly into the tool so you don't have to necessarily go to uh, Greek and documentation to look up you know which ones are part of which categories cool actually I have one more that's I think important to cover like how, does this replace the web console yes um, so that is that is the long-term goal um, there are still if you if you're familiar with web console um, you might have noticed that there are a couple of features that um, we still haven't quite added into control center um, that's uh, in particular if you're using um, Enterprise Edition of GridGain and you're doing data center replication, and we have not ported that over to Control Center yet. Um, but yeah, that is the goal: is that um, we will, you know, have at minimum feature parity with Web Console and Control Center, and then go far beyond the capabilities like you know alerts and traces and flexible dashboards and things like that. Thanks, everyone. Also, here's some additional resources. Um, we'll, we'll include that in the slides. Um, so control.gridgain.com if you want to use our hosted version of the tool. Um, you, know, you can get the list of upcoming webinars um, in our resources section. Um, check out our developer portal. Um, we've reorganized um, our, some of our, like our white papers and our documentation, so it's easy, easier for you to kind of get access to that information. Um, and then, you know, specifically, if you want to get to the control center documentation, here's the link right there. It's just gridding.com slash docs. Perfect. Yeah, uh, um, yeah, we'll be sending the, uh, the slides so you'll have the links. <laughs> um, cool. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. All right. Thanks, yeah. everyone.